Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. If you like fun folds, you are in for a treat today. I've got an arrow flap gatefold fun fold for you that looks like this. We're using the adorable warm and toasty stamp set to make a non-traditional colored Christmas card. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. The subscribe button is down below and make sure you click that small bell icon. That will send you notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new project video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's fun fold card. Here's a good close up of this arrow flap gatefold. Isn't this cute? Let me teach you how to put the card together. This is actually the gatefold portion of the card. The card base itself is a separate piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is eventually gonna get mounted on top of here. I've got my stamp and trimmer here with both the scoring and the cutting blade on the track. I'm gonna navigate that cutting blade down and out of the way. What we're gonna do is a couple score lines to create that gatefold. This piece is four by 10 and a half inches. The first score line is two and five eighths. So I'm gonna line that right up here against the top, a nice straight edge here to help you. And we'll create that first line. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna slide all the way over to seven and seven eighths. And we're gonna create that last score line. I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm gonna go over those score lines so that they're nice and crisp. I'm gonna do that on each of the sides. Our next step now is to make the designer series paper flap. And I'm using a piece of six by six designer series paper. This is the easiest way to do this. So if you're using 12 by 12, cut it down to a six by six square. What you're going to do is you're gonna open up your cutting track and you are going to navigate the tip of the designer series paper at the top and at the bottom inside the cutting track. The Stampin' Up! cutting guide is clear, which is gonna allow you to see through it. So I'm just gonna pivot this at the top and the bottom to see if those points are right inside that black track. And then once they are, we're going to slice. You'll end up with two pieces that look like this. It's wonderful because you're gonna be able to do one cut and create two flaps for two cards. We need to make one more score line on here, and I'm gonna flip that over to what's gonna be my wrong side. And I'm going to line up that long straight edge right here at the half inch mark on the right side of my trimmer. This is one of the reasons I love the stamp and trimmer is because you've got cutting and scoring dimensions that you can use on both sides. And then we'll score. I've got one of the small grid papers here to protect my work surface because I want to stamp a little bit of a background. The stamp set that I'm using is called Warm and Toasty. It is so cute. And I absolutely love that there's a snowflake image here so that you can create adorable backgrounds quick and easy. I'm gonna be using the Coordinating Soft Suede Ink. That's the wonderful thing about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. I've mounted my snowflake here. I'm very carefully gonna ink this up. Why I've learned the hard way, don't tip the stamp because you don't wanna get ink around the outside edges of your image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna press firmly and I'm also going to rotate the stamp and change the direction a little bit. I want this to look more like designer series paper than I do stamped images. So I'm gonna to concentrate to make sure that I've got some images falling on the cardstock and falling off the cardstock. I'm also going to open up those interior flaps so that I can repeat that pattern. Now that this side is done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing now on this side. Once your panels are finished, it'll look a little bit like this. You can go ahead and stamp the inside if you'd like as well, which is what I did in my original sample. And while we're working with our ink, let's go ahead and work on the insert of this card. For the greeting, I actually decided to use the Memento Black ink pad. And from that same stamp set, I've chosen the words Sharing Christmas Cheer. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll ink those up in the black ink, and I'm going to stamp those here. Well, that wasn't real straight, is it? So you know what? I love to teach you ways to fix the mistakes that you're not happy with. So I'm gonna flip this over. This is the great thing about cardstock. You've got two sides. Let's try this again. And I also wanna give you another tip. Since it appears I may have put the sticker on a little bit crooked, and I'm sure that's probably happened to you too. I'm gonna to use my grid paper. Those lines on here are going to ensure where things should be straight. So I'm gonna navigate here from the top of the stamp and I'm looking at the word Christmas to try to stamp it as straight as I can. And I can see, yes, I put that sticker on crooked. Do you see how the image is tipping a little bit to the right? All right, let's try this again and let's compensate for that. So normally I would stamp here. So let's tip just a little bit, Ah, so much better. Let's go back to this piece of cardstock now and let's navigate that again. So I'm looking to make it straight and then remember I'm gonna tip it just a little bit up and that looks a lot better. 
with that same soft suede ink, I decided to add a few snowflakes. So I'm going to add one up here. And again, I'm going to protect that work surface because I'm going to add a couple more down here in the corner. The greeting layer is going to get adhered to a piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock. I'll be using my silicone craft sheet to help me with the adhesive, and I'm going to flip that over. There's our wrong side. Adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to that silicone craft sheet, which is going to ensure that I'm going to keep my work surface sticky free. We'll go ahead now and we'll center this in the middle of this panel. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. And let's go back to that designer series paper flap. Remember, this is the wrong side. This is my right side. We scored it at the half inch. So I'm going to fold that down and I'm going to go over it with my bone folder. We have the flap of our designer series paper here. So I'm going to crease that half inch to the back. That is going to go over the top of the card here like so. I'm looking to make sure that that arrow point is right in the middle of my gate fold. Once I'm happy with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to make a mark here and a mark here to indicate where the adhesive is going to fall. I'll use my silicone craft sheet once again just to ensure that I don't get this on my work surface. And I'm going to add adhesive within that perimeter that I created the pencil mark for. I'm going to give that just a little crease there so that I know where that score line is. The easiest way for me is to actually hold it sideways so that I can see the pencil mark here at the top and here at the bottom. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate inside that area. Once I'm happy with it, I will go ahead and I'll press and then I'll fold that flap down. The easiest way to trim this is to turn this upside down and to cut from the back side. I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors and I'm going to trim away the excess. That allows me to use this cardstock as a guide to make sure that I cut away only what I need. Remember I mentioned that we had a piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock here that was going to act as the base for our card. I did decide to add a small layer of Whisper White here to help break up some of the color and bring some continuity to the image we're going to add. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side and that's going to get adhered here. There's a very narrow margin of that Coastal Cabana that's going to show. It's about an eighth of an inch all the way around and then we'll press that in place. This now is the reinforced base for the rest of our card. This is going to get mounted here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this piece over and I'm going to add adhesive around the perimeter. Now that we've got our adhesive on the back, I'm going to go ahead and just hold that flap down so I can try to center this the very best that I can, looking to leave that margin again on all four sides. And then we'll press that in place. Remember the insert that we stamped? Let's go ahead and add that. And then we're going to work on the focal point for this card. I've got my adhesive on the back and I'm going to center this. Remember, you're going to be able to find all the cutting dimensions, pictures, and supplies down in the link of the video description below. Now let's work on our reindeer. I have a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock here. I love to use this when I'm using my alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. The Memento ink is a water-based ink, which is going to ensure that the alcohol markers don't bleed. I've pulled out the reindeer from that same adorable stamp set. I'll go ahead and I'm going to ink that up, and that's going to get stamped here. I have an image that's already finished for you, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a coloring tip. Stampin' Up! Color Coordination is an amazing thing, and you're going to notice here on the Designer Series paper, we talked about the Coastal Cabana. While there are Stampin' Blends alcohol markers for almost every single color on the Stampin' Up! palette, here is the soft suede that I use for my reindeer, there isn't one for the Coastal Cabana. And the reason is, is because there are markers currently in the inventory that create a perfect mimic to that color. So let me show you how I did that. I started with the Dark Pool Party Stampin' Blends marker. They are double-sided, so you can choose the tip side that best serves your project. I'm going to go ahead and use the brush tip for this, and I'm just going to do one side just to give you an idea. You're going to brush on color just like you would any other standard marker. Once that color's been laid down, I'm switching over now to the Light Bermuda Bay. These blend together beautifully. This is going to be my contrasting or my highlighting color. And you can see that there's lines right here in the stamped image, which are going to give you a great indication of where that darker color should go. I'm also going to repeat this area here, and I'm going to turn this to make it easier for my hand. I'm going to add a little continuity along the side. Now, it's very important when you're using alcohol-based markers that you allow a little time for that alcohol base to evaporate before you start blending. And the secret to blending is going back to your first color. In my case, it's the light. 
So I'm going to go back to that pool party. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the dark into the light so that those harsh lines are actually eliminated, which leaves me more of a shaded look as that alcohol begins to evaporate. This will become more of its natural tone. As I said, I had one that was all finished for you. So the soft suede blends were used for the body, the darker for the antlers and the hooves. I used a little bit of crumb cake blends here for those lighter areas, but I wanted to add a little pizzazz to my image. So let me show you what I did. I brought in the Stampin' Chalk Marker. Now this is a white chalky marker and it works fabulous for details. I always like to check to make sure that it's flowing well before I get it started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that cap and here in the dark area, I'm just going to make sure that it's working well. I do my very best to preserve the tip of this marker for details such as this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of dots right here to the back end of my deer just for a more realistic look. I also added a few up here in the head. And if you find that those are too dark for you, let the chalk marker dry for a few minutes, and then you can go back over it with your Stampin' Blends marker, which will mute that chalk marker just a little bit. We are back here to the card base that we created, and I kind of thought this was a little bit lost. So what I did is I grabbed my very favorite die set, which is the Layering Circles dies, and I die cut myself a vellum circle. This is gonna be the perfect separation between my image and the designer series paper without taking away from either of them. But I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer behind here because after all, it is a Christmas card. From the Forever Greenery combo, I went ahead and I pulled out this beautiful gold cording. What I decided to do was to loop it. So I'm going to use my hand here as a guide. I'm gonna leave a tail here at the bottom and I'm just gonna run this over my fingers which leaves me, oh, several uneven strands. Honestly, the more uneven this is, the better it's going to look. So go ahead and pull it in opposite directions so that you have an uneven amount of loops. I then took that cording and I placed it down here near the center bottom of my arrow point. I'm grabbing a dimensional and I'm going to secure those strands in the center using that dimensional because we're gonna put the image over the top, which is going to help secure the rest. Now that I've adjusted mine, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my paper snips and I'm gonna give those ends a little bit of a trim. Because vellum is opaque, I'm very careful to make sure that I'm gonna place my adhesive where it's not going to be showing. So I'm gonna flip the reindeer over and this is where I'm going to place my dimensionals. Because of the size of these dimensionals, I'm able to navigate them where they're going to fit well and balance them on the back of my image. This one area here for the leg, I did decide to use one of the mini dimensionals, which fits perfectly. I'm really careful about balancing these for my cards that are going to be mailed so that I can ensure they hold up well through the mail meter at the post office. Now that we have our dimensionals on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna center my reindeer right inside this circle. This now is going to give me an area here on the back side that I can add my adhesive. I've got my Stampin' Seal Plus here and I'm going just to roll that over the areas where I know it will not show. I'm going to remove this dimensional backing right here. I wanna make sure that it's good and stuck to the card. And then what I'm going to do is anchor this image over the center, leaving that arrow point showing, and then we'll press that in place. If you decide to use a layer of dimensionals on the vellum, make sure you mimic them behind the image in various areas to give you the elevation that you want. To finish this off, I decided to add some of the amazing gold glitter enamel dots. And you can see how much I like these. I've used them quite a bit. They have glue dots already on the back, so I'm gonna pick them up using my Take Your Pick tool. I'll place one there, and then I have a smaller one that I'm gonna place up here on an angle. And finally, I like to use a third, and I'll place them one up here. I love to use a triangle formation because it's a little bit more interesting to the eye. So here is the card we made together today. This is the way it opens up, and I wanna show you the other one that I made before you joined me. This one has a double layer of dimensionals on that vellum circle. And you're also gonna notice here that I stamped on the inside of the panel of the card as well. Just a slight variation from this one. You'll be able to find the warm and toasty stamp set and the current holiday catalog with Stampin' Up. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day.